Hello, it's Bo the Mechanic for another exciting video on what are we doing today. Look who it is, who do we have? This is James, I call him Jamonste. He's not a mechanic, but he is now. He said he wanted to learn how to wrench, and guess what, he's here wrenching. Look at the grease on his arm, that's how you know he's fucking for real. You see monkey. his hands, when you see your hands and they have uh, grease under the nails, yeah, that, means, that means you're grease, balling. Grease monkey. So this motherfucker <laughs> keeps it rizzle with me now. Look at what he's doing, he's putting an engine, in a Ford pickup. I felt like there's a bunch of videos about that, so we don't need to do it. But here, there's not very many videos on this. This is our Boston Whaler. This is a 13 foot Boston Whaler, one of two. We have two of them. This is our second one. It's got the tower for pulling, for wake skating. Let me show you. How about that? It's got a custom tower, high quality. It's got that, it's got the center mounted steering, made that little box, put it all in there. It's got the sweet ass customized Frank interior. It's custom with two beers on this side. Has a sweet ass whatever plastic velour. Anyway, we rock this thing all the time over at the ski club, man, and we uh, wake skate behind it, we wake board behind it a little bit, and basically it just gets run all the time. The problem we had today though is this is a Honda. It's got a 2000, maybe a 2004 Honda 50. Let's look and see. Look familiar to you guys? I think it's like a 2004, maybe like 2000, I don't know. Honda, four stroke, 50, 50 horsepower outboard. It's got three cylinders and this thing is basically dying out on us, man. It would sit there and run, and then all of a sudden it would just shut off. Every time you put it in gear, it shuts off. So I don't know what the hell it's doing, but uh, I just brought it in here to kind of figure it out. So we're starting from the beginning. And you might say, like, the carburetors used to go right here. Well, I jumped ahead of myself and just yanked them off. And the carburetors that used to be right here are now right there on the floor. And I'm going to show you guys how to take them apart and clean them if you've never cleaned carburetors and you're scared of them. And it can look pretty scary, but basically the easiest way that I found just with these parts... This is your manifold, your intake manifold. All those carburetors would be kind of on it like this. And this is your airbox connector that goes on the other side. So I feel like the easiest way for you guys to take this off, and I should have showed you, is just to take it off here at the, at the intake manifold. Leave everything connected. Leave all the carburetors connected and just unbolt it. And it looks kind of scary, but there's really just these bolts right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven bolts. And you just take your, this is your fuel pump. You just pop the, pop the fuel pump off and the return line and just slide the whole thing off. And then you can break it down on the floor, which is really easy. And there's just like two pieces of linkage, I think. This right here is your choke linkage. And then there's your throttle linkage, which is just this thing right here. Okay? So I'm going to show you guys when I put it back together because I'm stupid and I took it apart without showing you. So, anyway, it's just a three-cylinder. Like I said, I yanked the carbs off. I checked the timing, which is up here. Most people don't know, but it's got a timing belt. Pretty cool, like a car, huh? And I yanked all, all three spark plugs and I checked all three of my spark plugs, which is always a good idea if you've got some issues. And as you can see right off the bat, we got something going on here because as you can see, this spark plug is a little, is a little uh, it's kind of white, okay? And this one right here is black. And this one right here is white again. So basically you've got two whites and a, and a black and they should all be uniform in color. So they're right off the bat that tells me something's up but without having any special tools or anything like that. What it tells me is these two are running hot. This one's not getting as quite as good a combustion. So something's up. These might be running lean for some reason, and that's making it get hot because it's fucking with the mixture. Something's up, okay? So anyway, the next thing that I did is I've yanked these out. Just got my wires out of the way, and I did a compression check on it. And if you guys don't know how to do that, it's really simple. You have to go get a compression gauge, which they sell everywhere, and you can probably even rent from AutoZone. And it looks like this. It's a little thing like this, and it's got a hose. And you basically thread it in. Thread them into the cylinders one at a time, and you have somebody like Mr. Big Dick James over there. You have Mr. Big Dick James. Uh, <laughs> hey guys. And you just basically spin it over, man. You spin over the motor, and you just wait till, till it tops out. And this thing topped out at like 150 PSI per cylinder at least. I think the bottom two had 180, and this one had 150. That's still pretty good. I mean, you want the numbers to be pretty close to each other. So it's got a little bit of wear, but it's not, it's not bad. 150 is plenty good. Now, if you saw numbers like 90, if you said you had 90, 90 PSI on one of these cylinders, that's not good. Like 90, 150, there's huge differences between those two numbers. And so something's up. You've got like a valve issue uh, or you've got ring issue 
or something's going on that's fucking your shit up. And, you know, gas engines, when they get down to like 90, 90 PSI, they start to not want to work right. They, they're not building very much pressure, and it's hard for the gas to really explode. So anyway, I know that this has got good compression now because I did that test, and the test tells me that compression's good. So now we got a problem that's either electrical problem, it's not getting good spark, or it's not getting good fuel. That's what leads me to go ahead and yank the carburetors off like I, I had already done. Now the fuel pump, I checked it too. Uh, like when James yanked, when we yanked these, the, the plugs out, I pulled this fuse, this, this hose, and we crank it over and gas just squirts out like a mofo. So it seems to be getting pretty good gas. I mean, obviously it's squirting out like a mother, it's getting pretty good gas. So, you know, hopefully that is okay. Hopefully, you know, it doesn't, you gotta check, with a fuel pump you gotta check two things and that's volume and pressure and they're different things. Volume's how much it can move over a certain time and pressure's how much actual push you have in the hose. So hopefully it's good, we're not 100%, but I'm 80% that this is okay, all right? So, like I said, back to the carburetors. Now we're gonna clean the carburetors. So, let's just set this shit out of the way. I've already split my carburetors up and that's what it looks like. There'd be three of them though in a line. Kind of like yes, right here. You can see they all kind of just connect to each other. It's like in a little line. Well, this one's already part. So let me show you. This is your bowl. When you take it apart, it's what it's going to look like. There'll be a bowl like this. Take your four screws off of it. Blam. You got an inner O-ring. O-ring's good. You instantaneously want to look inside it and see if it looks like this. See, it's kind of nasty. There's a bunch of shit in there. A bunch of nasty looking rust particles and stuff. That's not a good thing. We know something's up. Okay, so then you're gonna want to take apart inside here. Your your what's called a main jet on an outboard engine on one of these four strokes is this thing right here. Okay, your main main pilot jet. Your main jet, I'm sorry. So you want to basically take this apart, unthread it with a flathead, okay, and then unthread this with a flathead. So let's do that. Ha <laughs> more exciting with this this dumbass. Here we go. Right, so I told you I was gonna take it apart, right? So I did. Had to wait on the compressor. I didn't tell you guys, right? So that this is your, your bowl cap, and the reason they call it a bowl is because it's a fucking bowl. This is what's called a float, okay? And this is what allows gas to go in and out of the carburetor, okay? And obviously it looks like a float. It's like a float for your toilet almost. That's what it looks like. It's hollow on the inside, which obviously keeps it buoyant. So when gas goes in there, it basically, hold on, let me show you. You got a little needle right there, right? So that needle is what plugs the hole and lets gas stop or lets gas come in. And so it sits down right there. That's where the gas comes in your carburetor. And this little thing goes like this and there's a little pin that goes in there like this. Shiza. If I can get it to line back up, it's awesome to do things one-handed. You guys ask about why my production quality is so shitty. Well, my production quality is really shitty because I'm A, poor, and B, it's just me, you know? I mean, James is over there, but he's doing his own thing. So basically, the carburetor's running position, it's, it's like this. Parts are falling out. Running position, it's like this, okay? So gas can flow in, and then as gas fills up that bowl, it starts to go up and up and up and up, and then eventually it stops. And when it stops, it basically plugs that hole with that little needle that I showed you, and now gas can't come in. And it's doing this cycle constantly, down and up, down and up, down and up, as you use the gas. It's a constant cycle. Okay, so that's that's what's called the float. So that's one thing you want to check on your carb. You want to make sure that the you want to make sure that the gas is actually flowing in. Let me take this out. Okay, moving right along. So, I showed you guys what the float was. You got your float, you got your bowl, you got a bowl gasket, you got your pivoting pin, you've got the cap, okay, this cap used to go right here. And so we've taken it free, and let's see here. Next, we're gonna take this out. This is kind of like a, a vaporizing hole, a vaporizing pipe. I don't even know what they actually call this, the actual name for it. Every single carburetor that you see, unless it's like a lawnmower or something, is gonna have something like this. And basically, so the, uh, the gas flows up this. As you can see, it's, it's, it's hollow, right? And that's the thing you wanna look 
on all of these little parts, these small parts inside a carburetor, you basically want to look through them like this jet. You want to look through the jet and make sure that you can see straight through it. And that's where 90% of your problems are going to come from, is that pieces of crap are going to be inside this, this jet blocking it and obstructing its flow. Okay, so we check that, it's clear, you can see right through it. We check this and it's clear, this tubing is clear, but then there's also these tiny ass little holes, you see? And these are like atom atomizing holes. So we basically like look up here at the light and we can kind of see that you can see through them, but they're a little bit dirty, so we're gonna blow them out with compressed air. And it's hard for me to get the camera so you guys can see straight through. But so basically they're there. Anyway, we're gonna blow these out with compressed air and make sure that they have tons of air flowing through them. And there's a little another piece. Here you go, here's the last little piece. This is all coming out of the carburetor. And there you go. This is another one. And we're gonna make sure that it's good. Yeah, you can kinda see through it. And then also with this, we're going to make sure that all the little holes in this are, are blown out. See, there's one right there. I think that's it, I think it's just two. So basically that's how it goes. On this carburetor, it's really simple. We're gonna blow this out where the gas comes from and this gas pipe just goes straight through there and out this hose. Blow it out, make sure there's nothing in there. We're gonna blow this out, make sure there's nothing in there. Blow out the vacuum lines. Just blow out every, every portion that you can see. We're gonna blow out the choke tubes. Basically blow it all out, make sure that there's no, nothing in there and then we're gonna reassemble. And reassembly is pretty damn easy on this XR, this, this uh, I'm sorry, 50 horsepower Honda. This came out, so it goes right back in. You might want to spray it with a little bit of WD-40. And obviously, I'm not ready yet. I'm going to blow it out and then put it back together, but I'm just showing you for your knowledge. Spray some WD-40 on that, a little bit of oil, and it goes down in there and snugs up. Next thing is this little bastard, a little atom at my atomizer. And so it's going to go with this circular part down like that. And then the cap goes on, okay, you can imagine. Last thing, we're gonna blow our jet out and we're gonna put it right back in the side that it came out of, right there. And when we get that done, we're gonna make sure that our float's good and we're gonna set it back in there. Now, sometimes you have to fuck with what's called the float height, okay? If you're, if let's say that your motor is spitting gas out or it's flooding out, it's called, what's called float height. And float height is just what, I'm, what I mean, it's this thing right here, it's, it's this float's ability to go up or down. At what position does it go up or down and let gas in or out? That's called float height. And how that thing is adjustable is right inside there on that metal tab. And you're going to have to look in the, the factory manual and you're going to have to set that to what's called, you know, it's, 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 it's adjustment. I don't know, whatever it is. Maybe it's one millimeter or three millimeters or whatever the hell it is and they usually measure it from from right here, from the, this flat flat area right there, down. So either way, man, I mean, if you got some issue where gas is leaking out of the carburetor, out of the back of the intake, you know, or if it's flooding out, or if it's like bogging down, sometimes your float height can be messed up. These carburetors, I don't think I've ever even taken apart, so I don't think they're messed up. But sometimes they do get out of adjustment, so that's just one thing to think about, is your float, float height. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this apart, and I'm gonna clean it all up, all three of them. And then I'm going to show you guys how to put it back together and make sure that it all goes back together smoothly so you can get back on the water. All right. So now we're ready for reinstallation. Here we go. This is that crazy ass construction called Cabaretta. Looks pretty scary, huh? It's just like I told you guys, man. I mean, everything looks scary, but it's not. This is just the bolts that hold it down. These hold the carburetors to the intake manifold that I told you guys, which is this thing. So all I did was take all these bolts free. This plastic piece will come off. And then you've got three carburetors and they're linked together with this plastic bar, but the things just pop off just like that. And you just pop it off and then this, same thing. You just pull on it and it'll pop off. So then basically you'll have one, two, three carburetors all by themselves. Looks really scary, but it really, it isn't. You know, so it's back together now. The awesomeness of this carburetor is back together. And so now what I'm going to do, like I told you guys, it's a lot easier to do it this way because you can actually get to the bolts. So I would highly recommend you take it apart like this. See, if you do it this way, you can't really get to those back bolts. 
So anyway, now we're going to put it all back together, but I've got to put some shellac in here, some Indian gasket shellac, because I kind of tore this gasket up. I'm going to buy another one, but for right now, for testing purposes, it's going to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and shellac the fuck out of it, and it's going to be golden. And i got to hook my little linkages up. Linkage goes like this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Let me just slide it on there so you guys can really feel what I'm talking about. Oh. So, this is your throttle linkage. It'll go here. This is your choke linkage, and it's going to go right in there. Choke linkage goes there. Throttle linkage goes here. Let's see, I think that's it. Pretty much, yeah, that's it. There's one and two. Pretty complicated. And you gotta hook up your fuel lines, which as you can see, I disconnected, and one fuel line goes there, and one goes there. And then they're all hooked up because you already did it when it was off the ground, see? Fuel line just goes up and it splits basically into three. One, two, and three. And I guess that's the input right there, input. So anyway, then you just bolt it back up, and there's just, you know, those crazy bolts that go right there. Basically, I'm going to hook it back up, put it all back together, put my plastic shit back on, which is right here. This thing goes like this. You might remember from your own motor. Pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, now I put it back together and I figure out if it works or not, and we go to the next tests. So I'm by the mechanic saying another exciting video on outboards completed. Thanks.